Welcome back to The Break Room. I'm Hector Navarro, and this is Film Ranks, the show where we come in with a top 10 list and, using our mega movie minds, generate the definitive top five for all you discerning rock stars. Today's rankings will be the top five best film twists. But before we get to that, a reminder that the list we create here today will be out on the new Rockstars channel as a listicle on Wednesday, hosted by yours truly. Also, if you like rankings like these, check out our listings from last week where we discussed the best potential Deadpool matchups in the MCU. Now, let's dive in. With us to discuss all of these shocking twists are he was actually a ghost the whole time, Eric Voss, and... It was all in her head, Maude Garrett. Hey. Hey. Hi. I have a ghost that's all in my head the whole time that only sees the color red. And uh, let's see, also had a twin magician brother who committed his whole life to helping him. Do you just combine all your Everything. picks into one thing? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Maude, do that as well. She gone, girl. She gone. Uh, I'm so happy that you're both here. You guys have some fantastic picks. Cannot wait to launch into this. So we're going to start before that with a little question. Eric, how are you feeling about your twists? I feel pretty confident about my twists. My rules for the twists are it has to still make sense when you rewatch the movie and still make oh, the movie sure. equally yeah. as enjoyable as right. it was the first time. So it has to Good. like completely reframe the whole structure of the movie. But when you rewatch it, you're like, oh, oh, oh. It doesn't like break it. It, it doesn't just right. break it or got make it, it boring. Got it, got it. And I think some movie twists are famous for just like being really shocking. But then when yeah. you rewatch the movie, it makes no sense. Yeah. So that's All not right. anything on my mm -hmm. list. Maud, right. how about yourself? Are you going to throw us for a loop? Oh, is that an Aussie thing? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't okay. think so. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's talk some twists. There we go. That's the best one that we've seen today. <laughs> um, I, I went through the ones that I think um, when I was watching it just was just like, I didn't see it coming. That was incredible. Yep. yep. And also Legacy. Like how much yeah. of a legacy it left behind the impact. in the filmmaking world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, those are some great parameters. Thank you both for defining what the parameters are. What a twist what is. A, what a twist is. <laughs> uh, we're going, we are going to go through each one of our contestants' lists, one ranking at a time, where they're going to tell us why they chose each moment and why it's in their ranking where it is. After we've seen their lists, we're going to take those 10, five from Mr. Voss, five from Ms. Garrett, and then our community poll pick, and we're going to work together to generate the definitive, authoritative, ultimate top five for all time, mm -hmm. or at least until we revisit this topic again. So let's get into it. Eric, let's start with you. What is your number five ranking? Okay, I have to start with one of the twistiest directors, Mr. Christopher Nolan oh. in The Prestige. Oh. So The Prestige has a couple different twists. One is that like <laughs> Hugh Jackman is using uh, Tesla's uh, teleportation device to clone himself. Every um, time, every time, and then one of them time. dies. There's a million crazy. Hugh Jackmans in this universe, which could be a good thing. I like that. No yeah. complaints there. The crazy twist, though, is the idea that Borden, a Christian Bale's magician character, his bodyguard or best friend slash Fallon is actually his twin brother, <laughs> and they trade off uh, lives. Uh, so this guy who's been with him the entire time of the movie is actually his identical twin brother who committed to magic so hard that he severed his own finger. It makes rewatching the movie pretty incredible, but also looking back to 2006, a bit problematic how they gaslighted Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> her entire life. Pretty messed up. Oh my goodness. But I Women love it. being gaslit in a Christopher Nolan film? It sounds pretty par for the course. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Tenet, Tenet did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, Maude. Yo. Hit us with your number five pick. What's in your number five? Well, in recent memory, I think that it was Parasite. Oh, yes. That really uh, took a unique twist in in terms of sort of storytelling. Um, the first half of the movie is yeah. set to be sort of like a dark comedy where members of this very poor family decide to infiltrate a very rich family's yep. life one role at a time, whether it was the tutor, the art therapist, the maid, mm -hmm. um, the driver. Mm -hmm. And then around the halfway point, this movie takes a turn. <laughs> and it turns out, like, like the genre changes, the story changes, and it turns out that the previous maid's husband lived downstairs in a secret basement yeah. and then... I don't know, shit hits the fan, I yeah. guess is the best way to say that. But it's such a gripping story. Uh, story. It won the Academy Award for Best Film. Yep. And there's a reason I think that this was just the way that it was almost like deceptive yeah. to think that you were in one movie and then it being completely different halfway through. So there's like twi 
Twistception. <laughs> Twistception. I think that's what every good twist should do. It should yeah. kind of even change the genre a little bit of the yes. movie. Yes. Mm. Or, or even divorce it from any genre. Because I think the best movies defy all genres, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, my number four, moving right along, does that, I think, brilliantly. Another twisty director, David Fincher oh, in Fight Club. Great twist. This is the ultimate, it was all in their head. Not all in their head, but at least this human being was an ima imaginary best friend. This is what forces us to watch movies now and take a note of how many other characters have talked to like yep. a sporting character. Mm -hmm. yep. If only the lead character has talked to them, we're like, wait a minute, is there all in the head? Because we, you know, I'll watch Disney Plus shows and be like, wait a minute, has anyone else talked to Gaia in Secret Invasion? Or, you know, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that all the time. <laughs> and so yeah, Brad Pitt, uh, who's called Tyler Durden in the movie, uh, and you see this in in, uh, in Chuck Palahniuk's novel as well, the lead character is called I, the narrator. I read it in one day. Yeah, one it sitting. really is a page wow. turner. Um, but yeah, he's only identified as a narrator. Same is the case for Ed Norton in the movie. And then you realize Tyler Jordan is the name of the wow. narrator and that Brad Pitt's character is just a manifestation of his, um, let's see, dissociative identity disorder. I don't yeah. know what the exact term they use in that story is. Yeah. Um, and then all the horrible, problematic things that Tyler Durden is responsible for with Norton. the Fight Club was all Ed Norton doing it yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. The soap <sighs> was on his hands. Uh, so great. Such <laughs> a great film. So That's good. a great one. I mean, talking about the impact, that is an excellent pick. Maude, over to you for your number four. Now, this is going to throw people a little bit because I don't think this would be uh, one that most people would think, but... Ooh, I'm ready. Atonement. Yes. Another book adaptation. Yeah. Um, I think that this movie is so well done. It's supposed to be sort of like the love story that didn't happen yeah. when um, Robbie and Cecilia, uh, Kira Knightley and James McAvoy. McAvoy. James McAvoy. Yeah. Um, basically have a relationship and Saoirse Ronan, the younger sister, catches them together and she's a little bit jealous. And so when someone else is accused of doing something awful to their cousin, she throws uh, Robbie under the bus. Ugh. And then you kind of like through her lens, learn about this entire story, but it kind of is all nice because they, they meet up again yeah. after the war and it's mm -hmm. a happy ending. Wait Wrong. Wait a minute, what's the twist? Wrong. This was, was a, a, a sort of a guilt cleanser. None of that happened. They both died. They never got to meet again. And she is solely responsible for the destruction of their lives. Yes. And that was a good twist. And she, was it Saoirse Ronan's character was writing this as a fiction yes. kind of a thing? It was her, in her fictionalized oh. a version of what she wanted to happen for But them, that right? was presented as fact as and fact. as true. Wow. And good. so the twist at the end is, mm -mm. oh, I got goosebumps even talking about it. Oh my goodness, it. romantic twist. I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah, I think most film twists sometimes will just make you feel a bit bad about yeah. the state of... <laughs> or a slight shock. That's yeah. Too much of a yeah, a shock. Yeah. Oh. I think one one of the most famous film twists um, that everyone goes to. Actually, I think when you watch the movie, makes you feel good by the end of the movie. It's like a peaceful send off. The Sixth Sense, oh. M. Night Shyamalan's 1999, one good movie. Uh, it's great. No, <laughs> I was going to say it. <laughs> Signs was good. Signs is pretty good. Signs yeah. is pretty good. I'll still go to bat for Signs, get um, it? <laughs> Swing away, Meryl. Oh, Boom. Waiting. Uh, yeah, that guy had, uh, before Sixth Sense, had a yeah. pretty decent career. Yeah. Um, and then after as well. Sixth Sense, of course, Bruce Willis, Malcolm, Dr. Ian Malcolm is, not Dr. Ian Malcolm, his name is Dr. Malcolm. His name what is Malcolm. What a twist. See, Bruce Willis was actually Jeff Goldblum the whole time. Jurassic Park. Don't Love leave it in. Finds Don't you dare away. cut it. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Away. His name is Malcolm Crow. is the name of the psychiatrist character. Yeah. We find out that he is a ghost that could be witnessed by Cole, played by Haley Joel mm -hmm. Osment. Mm -hmm. um, which is, when you go to rewatch the movie, every little detail just lines I up know. perfectly. That's the why his marriage was sort of falling apart, because yes. he was dead, dude. He yeah. died. Yes. But <laughs> what's so beautiful about it is it's not played cheaply. Yes. It is such a beautiful statement on the state of marriages that you can feel so mm. emotionally divorced from your partner that you guys are like in different planes of existence. It, it's it's, it, it's such an emotional ending and the fact that he can uh, finally finish his unfinished business mm -hmm. and come to peace with mm -hmm. the fact that he can move on. I think it's one of the most touching twists that doesn't leave you with a gut punch. It leaves you uh, with a sense of like, I don't know, with a sense yeah. of peace. Mm, yeah, even the little It was kids. also shocking. It was absolutely <laughs> shocking. I mean, Definitely it's a great shocking. example of audiences did not see it coming. It, exactly. it had such an impact. But to Eric's point, too, I remember the ending after that twist is that Haley Joel Osment's character was like at peace with, I'm going to see dead people now, and yeah. that's okay. Like yeah. he was also like, good. you know, so it, it definitely had that feeling versus like and, a dun dun dun. Right. Sort not of a all twist. ghosts are bad as well. Yeah, this one yeah, helped yeah. me. Right. Yeah. They're just people. Great. 
Yeah. Maud, over to you for your number three pick. Ooh, girl. Girl. <laughs> she gone, girl. She gone. Uh, another David Fincher film yeah. based on a book by Gillian Flynn that yes. we have read, which yes. is such an astounding book, I think. The movie does such a great job at it. It does. It follows the Duns, Nick and Amy, five years together uh, in a marriage, and mm -hmm. turns out Nick Dunn's not the best kind of guy Nick and sucks. I think that Ben Affleck playing this guy so who good. like one second you're like okay and then the next second you're like I hated him the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect casting. Perfect, Perfect casting. casting. He's really good. Yeah. He's but really it good. turns out substantial evidence is mounting that while Amy his wife is missing it's yeah. pointing to him being the yeah. culprit by uh, increasing his life and health uh, insurance, the insurance policy. Right, right, right. All these her clues. health insurance policy and like, making like big spends. You know, that he's he, guilty. He's, he smiles yeah. during a photo when his wife is missing. Like, you idiot. Like, That's all it. of these things, yeah, mounting up. There's it turns out. A blood stain on the floor. No. <laughs> Rosamund Pike oh. plays such a fantastic psycho. Yeah. She has completely manipulated and long term uh, planned out. Uh, framing her husband yes. for murder, but then like the twist as well. So it's, it's another movie where like the first half of the movie you're convinced of one thing, yeah. the truth is unveiled, this whole entirely second movie rolls out in front of you, and then the twist at the end is that him fighting to find his wife yeah. was met what made her fall back in love with him. Oh my God. And so when he realizes he's been framed, he's trying to get out of there, yeah. she's inseminated herself. And it's like, well, our baby needs us. Ah, great movie! She goes, that's marriage. Ooh. Right? That's the whole thing. What a chilling thing. I mean, it reads even better in the book because it's, you it's, read her handwriting and you see that she's like using yeah. different handwriting, different it's pen strokes. It's a shift of perspective yeah. that, again, I think the film really brilliantly captured. Yes. At the end of it, you're like, they're both awful people. Yes. They deserve right. each other. Like, this is the most toxic, effed up relationship yes. ever. But what a twist. So yes. good. What a twist. So, so good. Um, all right. My number two yes. is another, I think, a famous one, kind of a go-to one. Uh, the Usual Sus. Yeah. Oh, yes. um, uh, one of the best scripts ever written by Christopher McQuarrie, who oh, he's now pretty directs good. all the, the Mission Impossible movies. He's pretty and good. Wrote, wrote uh, Live, Die, Repeat, aka Edge of Tomorrow. Mm, um, great movie. Directed by someone I, whose name I don't really want to say, but um, it, The Usual Suspects, one of the best endings. I think this mm. has like the best, oh, that that drop sensation in your stomach mm -hmm. when he drops the mug and it shatters on the floor and you see Kobayashi on the bottom of the bug. Mm -hmm. So the usual suspects, of course, a story of five criminals who they're always brought in to do a police lineup. And while they're in police lineup, that's when they stage this heist. You watch the story of this entire crew. There's this mysterious criminal mastermind named Kaiser Soze who just has this reputation of massacring all of his enemies. Uh, and then one by one, the different people get, like the movie begins with many of these characters being killed off. We think Kaiser Soze is one person, but the whole movie we're wondering who Kaiser Soze is and we find out at the end of the movie that the person telling this story yeah. to the police of who, who how- nobody suspects because he was like, he had like a physical disability. Yes. Like he's like this, oh, uh, underestimate this character. He's nobody. Mm -hmm. Yes. His name is Verbal Kent, played yep. by Kevin Spacey. Uh, a lot of interesting people attached to this project, but you know what? <laughs> the way this was revealed with just, uh, without, this, I think this is the best example of show don't tell. Yes. Because no one actually revealed this out loud. It was just watching the way a character walks. Right. The right, things right. he was no looking at, looking at throughout the movie, and it's just so beautifully revealed. And then the movie ends. Yeah. Like the movie ends. And yeah. I think this is just a good example of you know I don't think it brings you to peace the way the Sixth Sense does, but right. this is a great movie twist that just like the the twist is the whole point of the movie. Satisfactory. So it's beautifully absolutely. constructed. Yes. Mod, over to you for your number two pick. My number Twistiest two twist. here. What's in the box? <laughs> this one here, I mean, it's it's not for the faint-hearted, this movie, but I yeah. think it's so well done, it's so well acted, it's some of the best Brad Pitt we've mm. seen. Mm -hmm. um, Although, Fight Club. Anyway, uh, it tells a story about a very deranged uh, killer who is taking people out using the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. And some of these crimes are just horrific. Mm -hmm. And so we're following Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt as the detectives, your young gun and your guy who's like so re who's so done with this industry, um, following sort of like the trail here. Mm -hmm. And they're one by one going through these seven deadly sins with gluttony, with sloth, with, you know, Oh, all one, these one awful of, things. One of them is missing. Wrath. Two of them are missing. Oh, which are the two? Envy. Envy and, and wrath. wrath. Ooh. And so it turns out the big twist is the killer, John Doe, has decided yeah. to kill. Oh, target, yeah. Mm -hmm, the Brad Pitt's wife, Gwyneth Paltrow, yep. decapitates 
her, yeah. heads in a box, that's unveiled, and so he can fulfil the seven deadly sins of Envy, which was him. Yeah. He was so envious of Brad Pitt's character yeah. that he decides to do that, but by showing her and unveiling that his wife is even pregnant and he's killed her, oh. unleashes Brad's wrath. And what so becoming six and seven in the seven deadly sins. So it's a movie that... You don't want to watch every weekend no. <laughs> by any stretch. No. But it's so well done in its storytelling and in that twist because you, you're expecting just to see two Something more else. unsuspecting suspects. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But it was them all along. And now we are into the end game. Eric, give me your number one twist. How could it be anything else other than The Empire Strikes Back? Oh my back. goodness. Wait a minute. Maude, what's yours? <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so I think our number one is set. Whoa. <laughs> In wow. Star Trek, the biggest twist of all time that tauntauns can keep a human body warm by Isn't that amazing? Their guns. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody yeah. saw it coming. I don't know why you use this photo. That's no. weird, yeah. <laughs> of course, Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's father. How could we how, I mean, look, it's not the like the the cleverest like crazy restructuring twist ever, yeah. but the most impactful twist yes. in film history is yeah. right here, without a doubt. It's It created the Star Wars franchise as it was. I mean, yeah. look, I think Star Wars uh, 1977 is, you know, to me, the better film. I think it is a perfect uh, story on itself. Yeah. But Empire Strikes Back, the, just this twist, like, shocked audiences, and then without that, I don't know if you would, I mean, Empire Strikes Back, Irving Kirshner did a good job leading up yeah, to that point. Absolutely. But that twist just reframed everything. It, it, it created it, plot holes. <laughs> In, sure, in sure, film, but it but was okay. Then the prequels had to like figure all that stuff out. Yeah. But it's it's not just the impact of the twist too, but the but the notion of like taking your lead character, putting him through something like that. My father is the greatest evil in the yeah. galaxy. Then influenced every other franchise since then. Every filmmaker who grew up watching these in the theater would then get to their franchise and be like, well, the second one's got to be darker. It's got to mm -hmm. be My Empire Strikes Back. Like it had such an impact. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, I'm so tickled that you both picked that yeah. for number okay. one. Right. And I think impact and legacy is yep. the big one here. For sure. What is like when you think of twist? What is the number one that stands out into your mind? It Darth is this Vader one. Was Luke Skywalker's father all along. It impacted an entire generation, and in yeah. fact, it can still impact. Yeah. I have friends that hadn't seen Star Wars, and that was oh unveiled gosh. and you know yeah, revealed to them. Yeah, they just came them. out from living under a rock, and then you get to show them Star Wars. But sometimes, <laughs> like it wasn't completely spoiled for them in a, in that kind right. of context. Right, 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 right. But when they see it, it's like oh. Whoa! And yeah. so it's still having that impact. And hearing my parents talking about it when they saw it in the cinemas. I can't imagine. Like, I can't imagine. Because I, I I was the generation after that. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't there getting to see them in the theaters the first it. time they were there. And yeah, it, it, and even these days we get to see kids being recorded by their parents. Yes. Those videos go viral all the time. I know. I have a, I have a kid on the way. <gasps> I cannot wait to show them this. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to keep Star Wars out of, isn't out that great? of our lives. I just found out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. What a this twist! December, what a or, twist! Depending on when you're watching this, they may already be in the world, but we're still like five years away. I'm gonna wait yeah. till they're yeah. like yeah. five or six years old. I, I think, ten. Eric, real yeah. quick, I think you, you, I'm sure you have your entire plan, but I think I have the perfect uh, uh, plan Star Wars viewing order, if I may. If I may. Go for it. To any new parents. You don't have to, and you watching at home, you don't have to take this either. But my idea for the perfect Star Wars viewing order is show a kid the nine core Skywalker saga films in theatrical release order, the first time, right, we go four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. You've shown them the Skywalker saga, then go back and go, we're gonna do it again, but TV shows are included, spin-off films mm -hmm. are included, we're gonna do it in the chronological order. And I mm -hmm. think that that's the best of both worlds. You're gonna be bouncing around through Clone Wars. You're that's, gonna watch like Clone Wars episode that's one. That's fine, do it in chronological. Season three, do it in chronological, I love it. One. That's what it's all about, it's that's so what it's hard. all about. Because well, you then, can do it. Yeah. By the time you get to Solo, a Star Wars story, and, oh. and Darth Maul shows up at the end, oh. your kid's mind's gonna be blown. That's yeah. gonna be incredible, because they went through the Clone that Wars. Yeah. That's yeah. gonna be the best, uh, best case scenario. But that's just my, Pitch. So many hours of Clone Wars. Yeah, and then, and then so your child will be 21. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. And like being like, I made it to Ahsoka. I'm 21. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's keep watching. Awesome. That makes our top 10 list. We got them. Congrats again to Eric for the baby on the way. Woo. Now that we got those top 10, I'm going to now introduce the community poll. We asked our subscribers what they thought was the best film twist, and they chose Empire Strikes Back also. But there then we picked their second pick, and they chose Bam. 
Shutter Island for the second pick. This is that Martin Scorsese, Shutter Island. The twist, of course, being, if we've got to recap our audience a little bit, it was that Leonardo DiCaprio played a detective throughout the whole movie, working on a case. By the end of it, we learn, twist is, this dude is in a mental institution. He's in an insane asylum, and the people around the asylum are either playing along with his detectivery, or encouraging him, or maybe messing with him, because the twist was, his wife was killed, his wife died, mm -hmm. and he didn't know the whole time during the movie. What a twist. So good. What a Scorsese DiCaprio classic right there. So now that that is settled, we're going to head to the board to get our, into our definitive top five ranking of film twists. It's going to be right here on Film Ranks, so we'll be right back. And we're back, and now it is time to trim the fat. Specifically, each of you is going to eliminate one entry from the other's top five. So, Eric, let's start with you. What do you want to see taken out of Mod's top five and why? Yeah, I, Eric. I hate to take anything off of Mod's list because I love good. all five They're of all these movies. Good. But just because we have a lot of Fincher representation on the board, we I'm going to make Gone <gasps> Girl be a Gone Girl. Girl? Girl. girl. She, she gone. gone. She gone. She gone. She gone. Yeah, I wow. think it's a great movie. Nothing against the twist of the movie. I think it's all great. I just think there's better Fincher twists on the board. For sure. I agree. And Eric historically hates women-centric stories. So I think it's more of an Affleck movie than a Rosamund movie. <laughs> oh, it's a Rosamund movie it's through Rosamund and through all the way. Movie. No, I'm teasing. You're right. There's a lot of Fincher, uh, and that is a, gosh, it's such a, it's such a twisty movie, but I think... To try to help your point, Eric, it's like the movie is also so much more than the twist. Like it keeps building yes. on that. You know what yes. I mean? So it's mm -hmm. it's it's That's less true. about sort of one twist moment because it's like when the turn happens, it gets crazier. And girl, <laughs> that movie is great. So you should watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Yes. Um, all right. So now, Maude, let's get a little revenge here. What would entry would you like to see tossed from Eric's top five? I agree. If a twist is the catalyst for the right. the rest of the movie to unfold further and further, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that in a couple of mine. Um, but I will say that when you have like a series of twists to try and explain it, when you mm. have a magician movie, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're waiting no. for the yeah. You know, the reveal. The reveal. And oh. so I think even though the reveal is a twist, you're still expecting an answer in right. this case. So right. all signs point to a reveal to happen. Right. And also, Hugh Jackman got cloned, the brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Kind of wild. Kind Fair of enough. Wild. Um, Christian Bale having a twin brother is like the sixth crazy yeah. thing yeah. that happened in that movie. Yeah. Also, I don't know if this is controversial, but I remember that movie coming out, I think, the same year as the Edward Norton movie, The Illusionist. Yes. They did. It was a magic year. It was a magic year. And I kind of prefer The Illusionist just for the fact that the big twists in The Prestige were like sci-fi including into mm -hmm. that world. Yes. Whereas the big twist in The Illusionist, I'm going to spoil another one, bonus spoiler here for the movie The Illusionist starring Edward Norton, is that people thought he was actually performing real magic on stage because it was so impossible. And the reveal in that movie was, no, it was all just really clever illusions that he did on stage through various little tricks and mm. gadgets and things. So I was almost, in a way, more impressed with that if you will, then for Christopher Nolan's twist to be like science fiction that's impossible, it, yes. right? Lines. I'm like, <laughs> it does go wild. I mean, David Bowie <laughs> plays Nikolai Tesla hey, yeah. hey. in that great. movie, which is wild and amazing. Leave Bowie out of this. Leave <laughs> Bowie out of but this. But that's as big of a twist if you didn't know he was in the movie, yeah. right? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Okay, now let's flip it. Maude, what entry from one of Eric's here has to be in our top five? I'm struggling and I need this to be a group decision because okay. these three are yeah. fantastic yeah. choices. In fact, I was going to put them in my top five, but I thought <gasps> they're such popular twists sure. and so renowned and hold such a legacy. You were like, I want to give some love to Atonement. You're like, let me get... Let yeah, me just, that's yeah. it. <laughs> so, well, then, can I, can I point something out to you before we jump into the picking one from each other's list? Yes. You avoided the top one that Eric had. It's also your top one. Can we just not agree that... Empire Strikes Back number is gonna one is spot. gonna be in here one. somewhere. You want to put yeah, it number one? Number, number one. one. I mean, wow. the fans voted at number one. Both of us. There's unanimity. Okay. Let's, okay. Yeah, number one the across the board. I love that. I love that collaboration. Back to you, Mod. Of the other three, which one from Eric's would you like to have in play? I do think when we think of most popular yeah. twists. Yeah. I think it has to be the sixth mm. sense. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Let's bring really that over. Somewhere so this there. is in play somewhere. So is the community yes. pick, Shutter Island. That's also oh. in play. Eric, over to you. Which of mods remaining here do you think should be in the top five? 
Ooh, okay, so I, I have to make sure Fincher is represented somewhere in the top five, so I'm going with seven. All right. Yeah, I just think that that reveal, that twist, I mean, it's it's like an amazing 10 minutes of filmmaking. Uh, I mean, just the reveal that Kevin Spacey's in this movie because he was not credited, he was not in the marketing oh, at all. Oh, really? When he showed up, he first made a cameo as a paparazzo earlier in the movie, mm, and crazy. all you hear is his voice, and he's like, what, I have a right to take pictures? He does some stupid voice. Yeah. And then later he shows up, and that's how he knew who Mills and, and everybody was. So, and, and I love this. Movie. Honestly, all of these examples down here are great examples of rewatchability, right? That the twist doesn't oh, break yeah. the movie, enhances the movie. So the next time you watch it, seven included, it's like, oh, paparazzi there. And then Spacey's coming in and doing this and doing that. So excellent pick there. Okay, so these now you have four in play. Mm. Let's talk through what else are you feeling do you think should be in the top five here? We've got Usual Suspects, Fight Club, Atonement, Parasite. Mm. You know what I will say? If we're doing only one Fincher in the top five, then maybe only one Kevin Spacey in the top five. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. We don't need, I mean, Usual Suspects is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> it is a really good movie. The twist is is great. So now we have two Finchers in the top five. I mean, I move this over here. Uh, do we agree, disagree? One Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But do we agree, agree disagree? How do we feel, Maude, about the, the Fight Club, Eric, about the Fight Club twist that Tyler Durden was actually Edward Norton all along as being in the top five? Is it kind Hmm. Like. Let's see. In, in the way uh, I think Usual Suspects hinges more on its twist than Fight Club hinge, hinges on mm. its twist. But I think Fight Club is a better movie than the Usual Suspects. Now we're not ranking movies. We're right, ranking the twist. Uh, mm. But I think if a movie is too dependent on its twist, is it as good mm. of a twist? Okay, you're actually making a really good point because when I think of Fight Club, I do see it as an entire an entirety. I yeah. think it is the brilliant acting, I think it's and the great script honestly, writing, and I think it's the twist as well. The usual suspects can kind of be summarized to that final few moments of the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that doesn't really speak you're to right. the, the rest of the strength of the story. Of, I also of, feel yeah. like the usual suspects, and I, and I say this as someone who put this in my top five, I love this movie. Um, it is, it doesn't, the twist doesn't really teach us much about the character. It just reveals right. something that, that he was a pathological liar. <laughs> it's a but twist But it doesn't for teach twist. us anything about human nature or expose the themes of the movie and the way that Fight Club's twist yeah. reveals the themes of that movie. So it's a twist for twist's sake. I think it's a fair elimination. Uh, last one, just for this. Which one made you want to start the movie immediately again from the beginning to watch it Between through? those two? Oh, yes. Fight Club. That's a good Club. question. It might be Fight Club. There I mean, it I, I, It's only because yeah. Usual Suspect, it, it explains everything to you. It, right, You, you re-watch right. everything you're right, you're in right. that montage. You know? right. So Fight when that twist one. happens, you're just like, whoa, wait. Okay, great. Okay. I mean, okay. Eric, are you good? We got two mod. I mean, really, you guys are sharing one. We've mm -hmm. got two from you, Eric. One of the community picks. Are we okay with Atonement and Parasite being left behind? Are we good with that? Because Because before yeah, we started filming probably. the second half, I do want to point out, Eric Boss was going hard for Atonement. I this love dude Atonement. loves Atonement. I love that film. And I love it's Parasite. They're great, I great mean, films. Er, one of the, our first episode of Film Ranks, I mentioned Parasite as having yes. the creepiest, like, surprising jump scare. This is, this was oh, Eric's. Oh, yeah, this the reveal. Yeah. 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 This was one of Eric's pick yes. for the uh, uh, first episode of Film Ranks for the best horror moment in a non-horror film. Yeah. Was from the movie Parasite. So that's yeah. a great movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in Parasite for every one of these episodes <laughs> that I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have brought it in for the Deadpool fight episode. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm yeah. okay. I'm okay with I'm these being too. brilliant films, okay. but not in top five best twists of all time. Got you. So, all right, folks, yeah. let's rank them. Let's get this list in order. We've got Empire Strikes Back, Luke, I am your father. Mm. That's there at number one. How are we feeling about the rest of these? What do we think? I would really like to hone in on the twist that spawned a quote that singular yeah. line moment from yeah. that twist What's because when you have here our number one that's I a line am no, your father. No, that's I am the no. twist yeah so that i think is in there when we have seven Oh, what's, what's in the box? box? What's in the it's, box it's, it's is great. Mean. You cannot say the phrase what's in the box without saying it that way. I know. You have the I, sixth sense. I but that's not really the twist. You're right, but that's not the, involved in the twist part of it, right? That is right? a good point. You got fight, fight Club, First Rule of Fight Club. That's not really involved with the Tyler Durden-ness of it all, but this is specifically from those last few moments. It's the twist. What do you think, Eric? I'm more certain about the bottom of the, the five. I oh, think, go for it, go I for it, come on in. I Island might have a more interesting, no, I don't know, I go back and honestly, I think. I think this is comfortable in the number five number spot. Five slot. Boom. I okay. really do think Take that, so. community. Thanks, community. It was a great <laughs> choice when, when you compare them to these other yeah. incredible twists as well. Again, but, you yeah. guys are really sharing Empire Strikes Back oh, yeah. with the community as well, yeah. like the community picked that too, so. Yeah, that's locked in, number one. Yeah.
Are we happy to lock that in number five? Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. okay. And I think okay. Fight Club, I would put it number four. Okay. Mm. I'm okay with but that. But I'm debating between these two. I would flip oh. Sixth Sense and Seven. I feel like we're in, do we want to flip it? Flip it? What do we want to do there? I don't know. I don't know. Aesthetically, that looks really nice. <laughs> the colors are all separated <laughs> out. Turns out that's and... a big part of the show, Film Ranks, is how does it look aesthetically? So that's <laughs> it's really great that that's been a consistent thing, too. No, but to be fair, if we're talking about these great movie impactful moment twists, mm. the Bruce Willis was dead all along. I think can be argued that that's a stronger twist. I agree. Than like, mm -hmm. oh, the twist is, well, which one was wrath? Which one was lust? That because, wasn't the conversation. Well, lust right. was a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Exactly, that one. exactly. But, but he was dead all along. Adds to the story, adds to the rewatchability of the story. Doesn't end specifically on a downer note, meaning the twist wasn't for twist's sake, sort of like a usual mm. suspects or something like that. But all in all, we can agree, M. Night Shyamalan's best work to date. Yeah, it is. Oh, for sure. And I'm including The Last Airbender. I know, but this is way better. <laughs> uh, you know what? You've low actually blow, said a really blow. good point. I do think The Sixth Sense was known for that crucial moment. That was your pin drop. That was your brain melt moment. Do you guys remember when this came out in 1999? I mean, Maude, you weren't alive yet. But Eric, do you remember when, because you were born in what, 2000, 2002? I Around forget. that. Yeah. Do you remember when this came out in theaters in 1999? Oh, I remember taking my grandkids to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a life-changing moment for Absolutely. all of us. No, it, I ruined it, someone's birth day because they wanted to see it and, and I was you, too you young and it. I didn't want horror. Oh. So I wouldn't go and I ruined her birthday. Sorry, Kat. What else did you watch in 1999? What are you doing now? There was a bunch of great movies that year. It was one of the best, what'd you watch? The Iron Giant, Matrix, Galaxy Quest, all great. Phantom Menace? Phantom Menace. Da, 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 da. Oh, very cool. Yeah. No, but I remember when this came out in theaters that I remember that, especially like my parents and their friends that were talking about it, they were like, oh, Oh, go see it before it's ruined for you. Like, the twist was such a big part of, mm -hmm. I feel like what audiences were experiencing in 1980 when The Empire Strikes Back came yeah. out, and Homer Simpson ruined it for that entire line of moviegoers <laughs> in, outside of the theater. I yeah. can't believe it was Darth mm -hmm. Vader, Luke Skywalker's yeah. dad. So yeah. that was 1999, but with The Sixth Sense. A I fun agree. thing to think about with The Sixth Sense is, yes, the, the twist that he was a ghost the whole time. I think it's also fun to imagine a world where we didn't see a trailer for The Sixth Sense, mm. and watching the first act of that movie, not knowing that Cole can see ghosts. Because they don't mm. reveal that he can see ghosts it's like until a family like, drama. like 40 it's, minutes into the movie. Yeah. And it's just kind of like this weird family drama where like something weird is going on, but it's like a completely different, if you just go into it blind, again, when my child is born, when they are 12, <laughs> I will just put on the sixth yeah. sense and not tell awesome. them anything about awesome. the movie. Awesome. That's a great plan. They'll leave they have to be older than Misha Barton is in that film. Oh yeah, oh, what that's, a moment. A oh my gosh. Blah, that oh. part? Mm -hmm. So sad. Was it the reach? <laughs> goodness um, or that I, one I, kid that was like do you see my dad's gun blood oh. like that was yeah. yeah that's why i wouldn't yeah. go see it yo i need to rewatch the six cents that movie's a banger that was great yeah especially for that kid that was a banger. <laughs> oh eric that was a really well, good there's joke. our list there's our list i think everybody the definitive top five film twists of all time Thanks for joining us here today on Film Ranks. We're going to have a beautifully constructed listicle out on the new Rockstars channel on Wednesday, so make sure to check that out. Next Monday, make sure to tune in where we're going to be covering the top five dumbest plans in the MCU. <laughs> and there are some doozies, let me tell you, really dumb ones. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Break Room. And please, we love our audience, so make sure to leave a comment below if we missed any uh, uh, twisty moments that you would like us to have talked about. Because who knows, you might be featured in a future list. So thank you again to our guests for joining us, Maude and Eric. Where can people find you online? Maude, where are you at? I'm at Maude Garrett on all social medias. And I'm doing Loki breakdowns, I think. Wonderful. Here. And I've done Fan Ahsoka, so check those out. Fantastic. Eric, you've done basically everything else in you rock stars. <laughs> where are you at? Yeah, you can just kind of click on one of the videos on the sidebar, and I might be <laughs> in it, and it'll be fun. <laughs> EA Voss. It's in the name. There it is. It's, there. In the, it's in the name. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.